Thanks very much. Um, thank you for uh, inviting me to speak. Uh, I love coming to meetings in New York City, especially now that I live here. Um, and, um, you know, and, and shamelessly promoting my uh, institution. Uh, so I would like to uh, talk for the next uh, nine minutes about OCT uh, for glaucoma. And let's, um, let's look at progression uh, with OCT. So uh, you have progression software on the Cirrus OCT that actually does statistics. And some of the other manufacturers are, are working on uh, progression software. And I'll talk about uh, uh, Cirrus and uh, Spectralis and um, the uh, OptiView devices. Uh, because those are the ones that are um, mostly used in this country, although Triton's coming up fast uh, from Topcon. Um, so when you're looking at glaucoma progression, um, you want to look at either the nerve fiber layer or the macular uh, structures like the uh, ganglion cell layer and the interplexiform layer and plus or minus the macular nerve fiber layer um, and uh, maybe the optic nerve. The problem with the optic nerve measurement is that it's the least reproducible of those three areas. And the RNFL is probably the most reproducible of those three areas in terms of uh, looking at glaucoma progression. So here what you're looking at is the um, uh, printout from the serous. This is just a blow up of that lower area. So let me show you here first. What you're looking at here is the uh, optic disc cube. And the advantage of having a cube of data is that the measurements are more reproducible than if you just scan a circle. And it also gives you information about the tissue thickness beyond the borders of that circle, both closer to the nerve and, more importantly, further away from the nerve. And so when I'm looking at a patient who has glaucoma and trying to determine if progression has occurred, well, I'm looking at the location of the areas of progression and the shape of those areas. And if the changes are in the right location in the right pattern or shape, then that's very, um, you know, that increases the certainty that what you're looking at is glaucoma progression. Uh, if, um, you know, if the progression had been a dot over here, uh, that would have been less likely. And here you see an area that has become abnormal or has changed for the first time, here in the red and orange are areas that have changed multiple over multiple visits, and um, uh, the orange is where it's only changed for the first time. And any of these areas of change that we're looking at um, are compared to the two baseline exams. So it's an event analysis. And everything below that, these three graphs, which are these three graphs here, are trend analyses. Uh, the, the upper one here is the superior RNFL thickness, here's the inferior, and here's the average uh, overall. And when these dots turn yellow or red, um, that's either abnormal for the first, statistically significantly different for the first time uh, or for multiple times. And then this is the RNFL thickness profile, and here the shaded area is significantly different than the baselines. And then this is the optic nerve head measure, the cup to disc ratio. And when the nerve fiber layer is getting thinner and the cup to disc ratio is getting bigger, you have uh, excellent evidence that in fact your patient is getting worse, uh, that, that it's progressing. Um, and then you could look at the data also by looking at the numerical values, uh, as you see here. And again, the statistical significance is shown. Uh, and this allows you to look at up to eight um, scans uh, over time. Uh, this is what the, um, the serial analysis looks like on the Spectralis uh, OCT from Heidelberg. So they're very good data, but they don't give you stats. Uh, so you just have to do the comparison. Um, sort of in your head. And then this is what the comparison looks like on the OptiView device. And here you see the macular uh, parameter comparison over time. And then the RNFL and optic nerve head comparison over time. RNFL profile, thickness profile. And then here, this is just a linear regression 
uh, trend analysis uh, for the GCC on the right, the ganglion cell complex, and the RNFL, the retinal nerve fiber layer on the left. Um, when the nerve fiber layer is uh, thick enough so that you can measure change, these parameters are really good in terms of looking at progression. But once you hit the floor, if, you, if the nerve fiber layer gets thin enough, say about 55 microns or so on cirrus, um, and a similar number with the OptiView, a little bit lower number with the spectralis, um, then you can't really measure change anymore in terms of these global parameters that I'm showing you. And so you should be careful not to fall into the trap of thinking that your patient is stable just because there's no change being shown on the OCT, but rather you need to think about, okay, well, is there still enough tissue where this machine can measure change? And if you've hit that floor, you really have to go by other parameters. And the optic nerve head may be a parameter that you can use for a little bit further down, downstream in the disease, um, but certainly visual fields uh, will give you this. So let me show you some data um, about uh, conversion, uh, progression, and prediction of progression. And here uh, we're looking at people who are glaucoma suspects or preparametric glaucoma, so they have normal visual fields. Um, and in these people, the ones who uh, converted were much more likely to have an abnormal OCT. And that abnormal OCT was more likely to be the macular OCT than the nerve fiber layer, but both uh, predicted uh, future conversion of the visual field from normal to abnormal. Um, and then if we're looking at prediction of future progression in people who have parametric glaucoma, it's the same sort of thing. The ganglion cell complex was um, more sensitive than visual fields and the, or predicted the uh, change in the visual field, and the RNFL did as well. And there was sort of a uh, dose response, as you see here. This is looking at the visual field index and uh, the uh, GCC values, normal, borderline, or abnormal, um, and how they corresponded to the slope of change uh, of the uh, visual field index. And then if you're looking at progression itself, um, here, uh, this is in uh, parametric glaucoma as well as glaucoma suspects and preparametric. What you see is that in the suspect and preparametric gr group, the change in OCT preceded the change in the visual field by about two years. Uh, and if you look in the parametric glaucoma group, it was about one year. Uh, and so uh, we're seeing that OCT is a more sensitive indicator uh, of uh, change occurring. So OCT will detect structural progression about one or two years before the visual field. Uh, both the nerve fiber layer and the ganglion cell complex or the ganglion, or the ganglion cell interplexiform layer measurement outperform the visual field in detecting progression. In early glaucoma and moderate and advanced glaucoma, the nerve fiber layer uh, progression uh, decreases or goes away because of this floor effect. The GCC gives you a little bit more, but not a whole lot. Um, and it's important to monitor both the GCC and the nerve fiber layer, as well as the visual field, especially in advanced glaucoma, uh, to be looking at the visual field to assess progression. This is the Advanced Imaging and Glaucoma Study Group, uh, and David Huang uh, was the principal investigator of that NIH multicenter study. Uh, and here uh, is the uh, group at NYU. Um, I'm fortunate enough to, get to work with some uh, great people in our imaging lab. Thank you very much.